or should you look elsewhere, basically what to do. Well, first and foremost, chances are when you come here, you're gonna be just swamped and, you know, overstimulated, overstimulated with just about everything going on in Japan from, you know, the new place you're gonna be living to the new area to adjusting to the people. So ideally, you want the smoothest transitions. However, um, there are some valid reasons that you should not accept, actually, the jet house. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review those in this video. Uh, first and foremost, when I was on the JIP program, I was lucky enough that my city actually paid for half my rent. So my rent was subsidized, I only had to pay about 300 bucks a month, and considering the space they provided me, which was like two bedrooms, a living room, kitchen, pretty decently sized, and then, you know, a separate ba a bath and shower room, etc. It's definitely more than enough for one person. And the location was the best in the city that I lived in. So it was where the most things were happening. So overall, the area was fantastic. However, I have heard that that's not the case for all jets. Some jets do not have their apartments subsidized uh, and they have to pay for the full price. Um, some jets are also living in a very like old apartment because you have to keep in mind what they tend to do is um, it's like a revolving door. Once uh, one jet leaves and a new jet comes, and usually the Board of Education just keeps contracting the same apartment so uh, to make it cheaper for them because A, if they have to keep finding a new apartment every single time they have to pay something called key money uh, that, which is usually startup money when you want to make a contract on an apartment etc. So it's significantly easier and cheaper for the Board of Education or for the city in question to simply have you live in your predecessor's apartment. Uh, now, is it, is it merit for you? Well, that's the question. So one thing to definitely check to see is where, wh what's the area like, right? In your city, is it an optimal location for you? Uh, especially if you come here and let's say you're not planning to drive. And if you happen to only have one or two base schools uh, and your location is kind of far, you might want to consider uh, trying to move to a, you know, a closer apartment so you don't have to bike for like an hour like I know some jets actually do. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing to find out is what, what's your rent going to be like? Uh, now unfortunately chances are that you're not going to actually be able to fi figure this out uh, until you actually come to Japan, but I would say that if you live in a pretty rural area and they want to charge you like more than $600 a month or uh, Rokumayen every month, you can definitely find a cheaper apartment, like 100% no question. Uh, a friend of mine is living in Osaka and granted he only lives in a one one bedroom apartment however he's his rent is something like three hundred dollars so it's definitely something to keep in mind if they're charging you more and then like six hundred bucks a month yeah you should definitely look elsewhere uh, and then we have like the third dilemma slash problem ish see actually during my third year of jet I was actually getting married and uh, I wanted to uh, change apartments, I wanted to get my own apartment because since the, the, the jet apartment was half contracted by them, meaning they paid for half the rent, uh, they didn't actually say that I could live with anyone. They said it's not allowed, blah, blah, blah. Now I did consider just living anyways together. However, uh, my wife actually worked for the city, so that's kind of some, you know, just, you know, some issues, and if, if, if we got found out, then I'd have to deal with all this crap from them. So, I asked permission if I could move, and that turned out to be a freaking nightmare, because what happened was, at first they approved it, then once I found a new apartment, they, they, they said no, because they couldn't find a person to replace me, and it was just a huge mess, so, there was definitely that to think about. It's, it's possible your Board of Education, even if they're not paying for your rent, even if the, it is slightly over expensive, they're gonna still be amnet about you living there because that's their contracted apartment. And um, if you were to um, break contract, even though the apartment isn't contracted to you specifically, they would have to pay fees or uh, rather, um, let's say you found your own apartment, right? And then after you stayed on jet for a year or two, you decide to go back home. Well, obviously you're gonna 
you know, cancel the, the contract for your apartment, it's under your name, etc. Well then, what's going to happen is the Board of Education is going to have to look and find another apartment for the new ALT, for the new, you know, assistant language teacher who's coming. And they definitely do not want to do that. They're trying to streamline the whole JET process as much as possible. So it's highly likely that they will not want you to move regardless. Now, now I have heard that it's like, uh, depends on your supervisor. Like for example, in my case, it was shot down, but then a few years later, a new ALT came, a new supervisor, and they gave him the A-OK. -okay. So he was able to change um, different apartments. Obviously, the something to keep in mind is the cost of moving and setting it all up is obviously on you, which is completely normal. Um, but it's just something to think about. So overall, in conclusion, if your rent is like cheap, or if they're willing to subsidize it and it's in a pretty good area, chances are you're gonna want to stay in the in the jet apartment. You know, it's also possible that it will be somewhat or maybe even fully furnished depending on your previous predecessor. However, when you rent an apartment in Japan, they literally just give you the apartment. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, in my case, my apartment was completely bare. We're talking no refrigerator, no stove, no light fixtures. That's right, we had to actually buy, uh, you know, uh, when me and my wife moved to our new apartment, we actually had to buy our own light fixtures. Like, that's just unbelievable. You know, so it's uh, it's just something to keep in mind that if you did, uh, you know, you really don't like your jet apartment uh, and you did decide to move to a new apartment, chances are you're going to have to have a lot of cost because you're going to have to do the moving costs, the setting up fees, and you're just going to get like a bare ass naked room. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm curious, uh, if you came over as a jet, uh, what did you think about your apartment? Was it what you thought it was going to be? Was it good? Was it bad? Did you try to move? Uh, was it successful? Uh, please let me know down in the comment down below. And if you're a future upcoming hopeful jet and you have any questions about this video or any of my other videos, feel free to comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright guys, once again, thanks for watching. Bye.